Welcome to the channel. I'm Ryan Knows Tech with our website techinform.us and I know that it's been, uh, you could say, overplayed over the past several days since the iPhone 4S has been released. Comparisons, camera tests, all kinds of stuff. But surprisingly, I've gotten my fair share of requests to do them and put my thoughts in and my experiences with them. So that's what we're going to go ahead and do here in this video. Anyways, we've got a white iPhone 4S on the left, 32 gigabytes on AT&T's network. And on the right is my outgoing iPhone 4, also 32 gigabytes, however black, on AT&T's network. Uh, first things first, um, somebody said they didn't touch the box. I don't really care, but they did. Uh, it's white in the background. That's not just because it's white. Um, pay no attention to the actual color of the phone, but they did change that. On the bottom, we now have a iCloud logo instead of the Apple. Same stuff on the side. Of course, it has an S now. So that's slightly changed. If you've got a pretty table or array of boxes like I do, and lots of other people do, then maybe you'll be excited with that. Inside the box, you're not going to have anything different aside from, of course, the phone. You still get your stickers. Uh, actually, the sync cable, if I can go ahead and pull mine on my desk right out right now, is uh, it has slightly changed. If I can get the same part on the, this is either the iPad 2 or the iPhone 4, but they were the same. Looking at this, you probably can't really tell, but this uh, piece that comes off of this to keep the wire from bending, if you were to you know, plug it into your phone and then pull it, it's actually longer. And that was a problem that I had on my old sync cable for my iPad 1. Um, it actually got like kinked right there and, and it wasn't working right. So they have extended that uh, little piece of rubber slash plastic to, to make it more durable. So. That's a nice welcome addition. Unfortunately, that's a little too late now that we have Wi-Fi syncing with uh, iOS 5. We don't really use the sync cable very much unless you're going to charge from it. But nevertheless, it's nice to have that. Anyways, uh, you can obviously see the difference here between white and black. I've had three black iPod touches, a black iPhone, and two black iPads. So I thought, you know, what the hell? Let's go ahead and try one of these white ones. I had looked, I'd seen them in the store before. I've never really considered one. But... Um, after using this since last Friday, I'm very happy that I did go with the white one. It is really, really beautiful. And so is the black one. I'm always going to love the black. It's a nice, classic, shiny look. But uh, the white one here is really stunning. I love the way it looks with the chrome. And the whole OS seems to integrate really well and look awesome when contrasted with white like that. However, I have heard from many different people the screen looks smaller. But that's only because of the contrast. On the black one, it kind of blends in. Whereas the white one, you see the exact area. So we know that the antenna design changed here with the new iPhone. On the old one, this is the GSM one, of course. They actually all have uh, little SIM doors now in the same place. Uh, the antenna design has changed, though, due to the death grip that was present on the iPhone 4. If you were to hold it like this in a call or whenever you want to be using cellular data, 3G, anything, uh, you'd totally lose your connection, which sucked. So you had to have a bumper case for it. Now they've redone this. So uh, the only thing that's changed are these black antenna bands. Notice the one at the bottom is still there, I believe on both sides, so they kept the one at the bottom. But the one on top, they actually had to move the hold switch down on the iPhone 4S to make room for that other antenna. And then on this side, there's no antenna on the iPhone 4, but there's one over here on the 4S. And then on top, you'd find another one on the iPhone 4, not on the 4S. So uh, the, any bumper case is going to work. They've made the... Uh, I think I have a case right here. I have a white one and a black one. They have made the bumper holes here um, large enough now, so whichever model you have, it'll fit, and you won't have to worry about covering up your switch and rendering it useless. So um, it's nice that they've thought about that, and I will go ahead and say, uh, I know I'm spending a lot of time on this, that the iPhone 4S um, antenna design is, is pretty much exactly the same as the iPhone 4 CDMA version over the GSM. Aside from that, uh, you can see the... On the white one up here, the little um, proximity sensor, it is on the iPhone 4, but you don't see it. And I will add that it works better on the 4S. I don't know why, if it's white, if it's because of the 4S. I, I don't know. It does seem to work better. On the iPhone 4, if you're in a call, you hold the thing up to your face. Uh, it doesn't always know to turn the screen off, so you'd have your call window open with, you know, mute and end call, and then sometimes you'd hit the mute button with the side of your face, and then that sucks because nobody can hear you. So they seem to have fixed that either in the white iPhone or the 4S or software, however they did that, but that is now better. So um, I'm going to kill that call and go ahead and log into both of these right now. We'll do some boot up tests. I will say it may not be 100.0% fair. This one does have a SIM card in it. This one doesn't because I don't have two uh, plans with AT&T. But um, we're both on Wi-Fi. 
interesting. Oh, there we go. Now they're both three bars. No apps are open on either device. They've been up for just about a day runtime. We'll just go ahead and power them both down. While they do this, we'll talk about the specs of both of these. They both have 512 megabytes of memory. The OS reads about 503, but that makes sense. iPhone 4 did shut off quicker, but the iPhone 4S is on a network, so maybe it has to close out and log out of some of those connections. I've also been using it more. The A5 processor is present in the iPhone 4S, as well as the iPad 2. It's a dual-core 1 gigahertz chip. I will say that on the 4S, it is underclocked to 800 megahertz per core. And then the iPhone 4 is a A4 processor. It's 1 gigahertz, same processor found in the um, iPad 1, and it's only one core. So theoretically, this should be just about twice as fast. Apple says the graphics are twice as fast. I guess we'll open a game and, and take a look at it. But uh, keep in mind that the majority, in fact, if not all of the applications that are in the App Store right now for the iPhone have been designed using this hardware in mind. Uh, application developers may not have had an opportunity yet to redo their programs to, to uh, use the iPhone 4S's hardware to its full potential. So that'll come over the next few weeks and months, I'm sure, and will improve uh, how the device runs. But um, now we'll go ahead and boot them up and see what happens. Again, the 4S on the left is on the network right now, on AT&T's network, rather, so uh, it may take a couple seconds longer. Awkward silence as we wait. I could play some music, but I don't want to. Another thing that has changed, I don't want to turn them around but right now, but uh, the camera has changed. Yesterday, if you didn't see on my channel, I put up a, uh, a review of the camera of this guy versus this guy. And um, I got a lot of uh, good feedback with that. So if you'd like, run over to my channel and see what that looks like. So the iPhone 4S was quicker. Uh, a boot test is not always the best way to uh, compare phone speed. But obviously the 4S was uh, the first one here. And... The 4 is a little laggy, but this software has been on here. Actually, they're both clean installs of iOS 5. I did no backups uh, when restoring stuff, so that's nice. Uh, no apps open. We'll go ahead and jump right into the weather application. The iPhone 4S was very quick with that. But the iPhone 4 is by no means slow. It just isn't as fast. Uh, we'll see how the stocks are doing today. There we go. And about a second later on the iPhone 4. You know, big deal. Jump into Safari. I don't know what tabs are open. Looks like I have one tab on each. That one was Google. That one was something else. But uh, we'll do a, a quick browser speed test. Might as well just uh, do that now. So we'll go over to settings. I know I'll catch crap if I don't do this. I don't know what difference it actually makes. You can see the 4S was quite uh, a bit faster getting into the settings application there. And we will go over to Safari. Scroll all the way down to there. Clear history. Clear, clear cookies and data, cookies and data. So now that's done. Go on back to Safari. And uh, how about we load Yahoo? Pretty big web page for these, I think. It's going to load the mobile version on each. Well, Safari wants to use my current location. Go ahead. Yes. So there is uh, actually a difference. We're both on, both of these devices are on the same Wi-Fi network, which is pretty decent uh, powered. It's a pretty decent speed. Uh, we'll load our website, techinform.us. Go ahead and type that in. Okay, now we'll hit go at the same time and see which one can get there quicker. Our website does not have the fastest servers. I'll admit that any day of the week. And uh, it looks like it's going to load the WordPress mobile version here. Uh, there is a difference. I attribute all of this to the processor. There's no RAM difference, as I said before. So the extra core of that 800 megahertz or gigahertz or whatever you like to call it does make a difference um, of several seconds. I would like to do a 3G test, but as I said before, um, only one of these is on service right now. And I don't have another phone that I can use right now. Um, I say that because the 3G in the iPhone 4S is HSDA, HSDPA, I believe, whereas this one is just the regular 3G, so it's kind of like 3.5G. I have noticed it's quicker, maybe by a megabyte here in northeastern Ohio. Not a big deal. Uh, another application we can test is uh, the App Store. Looks like we're going to go over to top 25 there. Not the fairest test. We'll run over to updates. And yeah, we've got an update there. Back home. Um, the entire experience of the iPhone 4S, it just feels faster, and it should, due to the hardware changes here. Opening every application is a little quicker, booting is quicker, doing mail, moving stuff around between folders is definitely faster. It is not a night and day difference, but it does feel like a more efficient experience. 
We'll go ahead and launch a larger application here. How about Asphalt 6? It's a game. We're probably going to get bombarded with noise. Yeah, so the 4S is just a little ahead there. Let's see if we can film in frame. And see if I can do this without totally screwing it up. Nope, I screwed it up. I apologize. But uh, I don't think that I need to go through every application on here for you to get the idea that the 4S is just going to be maybe 30 or 40 percent ahead of the 4 the whole time, and that's to be expected, as I said before. But we'll launch music. Looks like we got some jazz on both there. Well, jazz here, Michael Jackson over there. One more thing I want to take a look at here is the camera. Apple made a relatively big deal about how the camera is quicker and launching and switching to video and stuff like that. I have noticed it. It's not as fast as I'd like it to be, but it is an improvement. Camera is not open on either of, of these devices, but as we can see, the iPhone 4 definitely made it, or the 4S rather, definitely made it to the actual lens quicker. If we want to switch to video, I've got to put them down for this and tap that. They both spiral, and they're pretty much the same, going back and forth between photo and video. We'll go back to photo. There we are. Um, so yeah, there is a difference. It is not um, huge, but it is a nice improvement. Most of that is probably due to the new lens and the A5 processor. Both of these are incredible devices. I highly recommend either the iPhone 4 or the 4S. However, if you're buying a new phone, it's your first iPhone, there may not be a reason for you to pay the huge price for the 4S. You get Siri. It's very cool. I'll have a demonstration of that in a few days. You get a much better I wouldn't even say that though. You get a better camera. Yes, watch the video that I posted yesterday. You'll be able to see the difference side by side. Uh, so you get the better camera, Siri, you can talk to it, yell at it yourself, as well as the faster processor. So the entire experience should feel quicker. But it, as I said before, it's not the night and day difference that um, maybe the 3G to the 4 would be, but of course we're skipping the popular 3GS in there. So as I said, both of these are great devices. If you're new to an iPhone, you do not need the latest and greatest, you might as well save your money and just get that 8 gig iPhone 4 for, I think, $99. That's an amazing price for a phone this good. However, it's going to be less feature-proof as the iPhone 4S. So I just thought I'd put my thoughts in, do my own little video here, doing some comparisons with applications and web browsers and stuff. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, leave some comments down below, some feedback. What are you using? Do you like it? Um, uh, check out our site, techinform.us. My Twitter, if you'd like to contact me, is Twitter, is Twitter, is twitter.com slash James R. Schultz. And I'll talk to you guys tomorrow in Wednesday's video. Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe. Bye-bye.